AI in Action is brought to you by Aulis International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldus.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Corey Bertram. Corey is the Chief Technology Officer at Rock. Corey, welcome to the show. Good to be here, JP. Thank you. So, Corey, let's start with yourself. Can you give us a brief background of your journey in data from where you got started, some of the roles you've held along the way, and, and taking us up to today as the CTO at Rock? So I actually went to school and got my degree in computer science, but with a focus in computer security. And I ended up staying in the security space for quite some time, which is interesting looking back nowadays. It's quite a bit of data at the time (laughs) compared to some of the things that we do now. But then went from there and jumped over into the private sector and did a lot of startups. Really got my my hands dirty and, and really understood how to build teams, how to build businesses, how to fail at building businesses, and then ultimately made the hop over to the West Coast and ended up at Netflix, where I ended up joining the SRE team. But really, that was a focus in uh, chaos engineering, which is what we now know it as, where I built out two t- big tool sets there called Chaos Gorilla and Chaos Kong, which were massive simulations of, of failure for the business and really helped them think about their global expansion and how they, they went into multi-cloud as well. Then I took a, a bit of a reprieve and ended up jumping over to a, a presidential campaign in 2016. You may not have heard of it. didn't do so well at the end of the day, but spent about three years building out functionality for both that and other nonprofits really looking to engage with end users and, and be thinking about how to really generate capital and content and energy within a campaign. And then from there, I, I was a customer of Datadog at the time when we built that and built that out and then ended up joining Datadog as the VP of infrastructure and SRE, where we grew the organization from about 400 people to what is now over, I believe, 3,000. Just an immense amount of, of growth at the time there from not only their infrastructure, but the company in general and really bringing them up to IPO. We took a bit of a break after that and then jumped over here to Rock during the during COVID, which has been an interesting journey. Yeah, to say the least. I appreciate you sharing the background. You humbly mentioned quite a few startups, but you've worked for some amazing companies and, and I'm sure learned a lot, which serves you well now, namely Netflix and being part of the, the senior leadership at Datadog for an unprecedented level of growth. But you're now at Rocked as the CTO. So for people listening not familiar with Rocked, can you explain the, the business as a whole and then give us some insight into what led you to join Rockta and what your mission is as the CTO? When I look at what Rockta is, I think we connect customers with e-commerce providers and then interconnect e-commerce providers between each other, really trying to unlock more potential in the transaction moment for the end user and and really making that a a value add to all parties involved, quite frankly. There's an immense amount of opportunity that we think in that transaction time that is really untapped by the end, by both our partner sites and realistically, we're trying to just create more opportunity to better serve the end user. So obviously with with the the last, two or three places you've been really premier, the the exciting organizations. You've been drawn to rock based on the mission. Can you give us some insight into your your role as as CTO? Obviously, it's it's a step up to the C-suite. You're responsible for all things tech. What does that look like? And what has the last year been like as you got to grips with managing various projects, various teams, dealing with the craziness of COVID. Totally. It is always interesting. One, joining a business in COVID and trying to learn the business, especially when our business is split between Sydney and New York. And so a lot of my engineering team is currently sitting in Sydney. And so trying to figure out how this thing gets put together on your own in New York City during the the daylight hours and then spending their nights trying to interact with the team and get to know the people and the interactions there is always been a challenge. The thing that really drove me here, quite frankly, is being in e-commerce is 
such an interesting space, quite frankly, coming out of SaaS providers. There is a high level of resiliency, reliability, and a level of standard we really have to hold ourselves to that needs to be above and beyond any of our partner sites. But realistically, you know, we can't be the ones going down. And that's something I really love. I love that challenge. On top of that, their scale is our scale. And so as they grow, we get to grow with them. And so we're seeing just an immense amount of growth in terms of technology over the last year with the the surge into retail buying that has happened during COVID. It's been really fun and exciting, but at the same time, it can be a little bit stressful. I won't shy away from that. There are definitely times where you're butting your nails and going, wow, I hope this works. But realistically, the team here has built an incredible amount of technology, really bleeding edge foresight here in terms of how we scale, how we grow just globally in general. And are some of the best infrastructure I've seen at any organization. And quite frankly, it shows in our resiliency. It's something that I, I I've really come to appreciate. I sleep better now than I have in a lot of years. So I, I want to drill a little bit deeper then in, into the environment because you're speaking so highly of it and rocks are growing at a rapid speed, which is very challenging in the current climate. Mm-hmm. So can you give us some insight into some of the, the projects that are driving this growth and then help us visualize what it's like to be a member of the team currently, specifically focusing on where you guys are utilizing data science, machine learning, data engineering. Uh-huh. Yeah. So listen, we, we are currently exploring, you know, we're using our Series D to really explore a lot of new product avenues. And at the heart of all of that is really our optimization engine. We have a decade you know, of experience focused on optimization and personalization across you know, billions of transactions over the last 10 years. This is really rooted in our ability to combine data with our controls. We determine in real time the optimal experience and action for every user and we have to do that within 100 milliseconds. There's a, an immense amount of technology that ends up going into something like that. Realistically, we're running and building dozens of models every single day. These things are constantly updating throughout the day. And that's really to help drive that both classification problems and regression problems that we see and we're trying to optimize for in the transaction moment. So we're using ML models at Rocks to help both drive selection and prediction in real time in less than about 100 milliseconds is really our goal here. On the selection front, the goal here is to rank the available options fairly and to really drive the end user experience in a way that delivers the highest expected value outcome. Really what we focus on here is a quality score. It's an assessment of these experiences and action combinations. Quality score dictates which experience combination wins the selection process and the overall transaction flow, which is basically how the appearance of ads or offers or upsells and then how much they are potentially willing to pay if it is a third-party offer. Our predicted engagement rate is calculated by our ML models. It's a customer's likelihood of engaging with an offer. Uh, of that, uh, our customer's propensity to engage with is usually pretty dynamic and changes fairly often. And so we're constantly having to reevaluate this and think about the feature sets and the data that is inputted into these models. Speaking of the data, there's realistically, when we talk about feature sets, this is just a lot of inputs. You know, we are constantly looking at, we are a data company through and through. And we're constantly looking at how data can affect this optimization. Things like site, the placement, the design, the message, the creative, and even things like age, gender, and, and just a dozen other feature pieces, feature inputs really feed into this model. There's also contextual data, transaction details that we use, things like what is the person buying? What time of day is it? Where in the process are they? What is the cost of the cart? Those all kind of feed into the model as well. And then we also look at behavioral data, uh, which is like historical interactions, things that we think the customer has seen before and, and generally just derived data from the user. So you're talking about the bleeding edge of high frequency, low latency, vast yeah. sums of data. And you referenced there previously, we are looking at a decade of, of historical data. So for engineers and scientists who want to work on, on super challenging and super interesting projects, you guys are quite the sandbox to play in. Could you give us some insight then into the, particularly in the last year that you've been there, the sustained growth and as you've interviewed candidates and brought people into the team, what are you telling these people that gets them excited about the mission? Because there's a lot of competing sure. organizations right now, but you, with the growth that Rock have experienced over the last year, clearly you've got a message that is resonating. So what have you been saying to engineers that have made them join at such a sort of rate? One of the things that I, I think is important to pick up on here is just the growth, right? There's very few organizations that you're going to find that you're going to get 
the exposure that we are able to provide in terms of where we're going, what we're doing, what we're building. There's so many other startups out there who just don't end up with that exposure. I think the sheer amount of partnerships that we've been able to create as a business has enabled us to really get our hands very in the weeds and in dirty in, in just this massive amount of, of data to pick through and figure out what really is going to move the needle here, what is going to make a difference in the industry. There's at the same time, there's a real challenge here around growing a business globally when you think about Listen, we're in multiple Amazon data centers. We are you know, continuing to think about multi-cloud and expanding in that direction. How do you potentially think about customers at a global scale and, and keep those data pipelines flowing 24 seven in a resilient and reliable manner? Also enabling velocity to continue to go a mile a minute in terms of just the development life cycle. We want to empower developers here to try things, to experiment, to constantly be pushing the needle. And that's something that you can't really do if you don't have just world-class engineering. And that's something that I think we, we've really been able to capture over the last couple of years and something that we're continuing to really double down on and think about how do we continue to raise the bar. Absolutely. Uh, and I think you've already given some insight into what your answer might be for my next question. But as you look ahead for the, the, the future potential for Rock, then particularly taking into account the growth that's happened today, what are you most excited about when you look ahead and, and into next year? Like I said earlier, the explosion in retail has really been a boon for us in the business. And it's something that I'm really excited about continuing to build upon. Fortunately, as we all know, the things we build today usually won't last two years from now if there are hyper growth scenarios. And so I'm really looking to the team and saying, hey, let's build for the next 18 months, plus or minus six, and really think about what can we learn from the experiments? What can we think about in the next iteration and really not get too caught up in trying to over-engineer for today? Realistically, I'm just trying to create velocity throughout everything that we do in the day-to-day. -day. And that's something that I think the team's really grabbed onto and, and is really exceeding in, in a lot of ways. It's something that I'm, I'm really proud of, quite frankly, when I look at the organization as a whole. I think that our ability to maneuver through this growth is is really what's going to make or break us. And it's something that I think we were, we've were we just absolutely nailed in the last year. Wonderful, wonderful. I want to now use this as an opportunity to get some insight and hopefully help some of our listeners who may potentially end up interviewing with you in the future. The description of Rock has clearly made it sound like an incredible place for anyone who's passionate about digital transformation, technology, and all things data science and AI. So with that, there's going to be a lot of interest, but I know you referenced the high standard and the high bar for people that you bring in. So when you're assessing potential future hires, what are the few things that you look for that will help you to distinguish somebody who's exceptional from, from the ordinary? And, and what can candidates be doing to improve their chances, whether it's uh, on their, their profile, personal projects, or throughout an interview yeah. campaign? Maybe against some norms, I love engineers. I just love talking engineering. I love getting into the weeds around the technicals. I want to hear about project work. I want to hear about the thing you built at your current job, your last job, in your spare time. I want to get into the details of understanding just what makes it tick? What technologies did you use? What's the stack look like? How do you deploy it? Like, I really want to get a super well understand, you know, rounded understanding of who you are as an engineer and what you can potentially bring to the business. I'm not really always caught up in years of experience or even quite frankly, your education background. It is always nice to have. And in certain areas, we certainly do look for potentially like some math experience and, and potentially some ML experience for certain roles. But in reality, I just want to hire great engineers, people who are excited about coming to work, people who want to build out culture, who want to think about these problems at scale, who aren't like scared of potentially taking that level of ownership. I, I really want and drive the engineering team here to, to really embrace ownership throughout everything that they do, right? Yes, I don't want to be woken up at the middle of the night, but if I do, I will absolutely help. But in reality, like I want you to be there on the phone call with me and, and I'm hoping that you are and I'm hoping that you're driving the conversation. And if you're not, that's fine. We always will help at the same time our things happen at the same time i think when you have a team that really feels that level of ownership life just becomes a little bit better and at the same time i want to just have fun with this right i don't want this to be a stuffy job i don't want this to be a stuffy environment i i think about 
coming to work every day and I want to laugh a little bit. I want to have a good time. I want to feel accomplished. I want to feel like we got something done. And then I want to go home and I want to have some, you know, assurance that like, it'll probably work throughout the night and I can probably get some sleep. Sounds like you're enjoying it, Corey. And obviously you're approaching the, the one year anniversary of joining now and your first step into C-suite level position. As you reflect back and, and you look at your path from startup to Netflix to Data Dog to where you're at now, what have you enjoyed most about the last year with Rock? People. I, I couldn't be more thrilled about the people I get to work with. That was something that was really important to me this time around. I've obviously been very fortunate to work at organizations that have gone through hyper growth. I've been fortunate to work with some really incredible engineers in the past. And I realized when I was looking for potentially another role, that what was the most important thing to me was the people I was working with. I just love the culture that we've built here. I think we take care of folks. I think we have a deep level of respect for each other. And it's something that I, I really have come to appreciate and realistically can't imagine myself anywhere else right now. Amazing. Corey, thank you so much for coming on today and talking to us. Appreciate you sharing your journey. Certainly love the detail and the enthusiasm and passion that you speak with about rock sounds like an incredible place to work and a lot of growth in store. Thank you again for your time. Thanks, JP. Appreciate it. AI Action is brought to you by Aldus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Aldus offer an exec search program. Aldus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. For more information, contact mark at aldus.com. Get the Aldus advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to Aldus members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career, and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus.com. That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.